Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're going to make a beautiful beef wellington, but we're going to make ours with a beautiful venison backstrap. Y'all stay tuned. So I've never made uh, beef wellington, much less a venison wellington before, so I went and did a little bit of research on I found Gordon Ramsay's uh, channel up on YouTube there, and everybody knows that his beef wellington is pretty world famous, and his recipe is pretty daggum simple. So got to think about how we can modify that to do it outdoors, so that's what we're going to show you today. So let's go ahead and get our backstrap trimmed up and ready to make this really elegant dish. So here's our entire backstrap from our venison. And the first thing we want to do is find, you know, a uniform piece of it uh, kind of down the middle here. So this thin end here, I'm going to kind of trim that off. We're going to vacuum pack that, um, vacuum pack that piece for, for later. Do something else with it later. And we we'll kind of want this to be pretty round. So I'm going to kind of trim some pieces here and I'm going to want it to be about eight inches long. Now this big end down here is going to make some beautiful steaks. Um, I'm going to go ahead uh, now and trim off all this silver skin and we'll slice that up and we'll have some steaks and we'll vacuum pack those. Um, put a couple in the fridge for a couple days from now. Now here's our piece for our Wellington. You see we got quite a little row of that on there. So I'm angling my blade up so they don't take too much meat. It's kind of holding back on the on that silver skin. Bit right here. There we go, and then that's a nice seam of fat right there. We would definitely want to save that in there. Okay, so that's how we're going to prep it. We got a little bit of loose stuff back here, a little bit of loose stuff back here. So that's our meat ready to go. Now we're going to do Gonna make up a simple marinade and we're gonna marinate it for a little while. Okay guys, we're gonna make a quick marinade for this. This is a teaspoon of thyme, teaspoon of ground rosemary, teaspoon of black pepper. Into that, we're gonna give a couple tablespoons of Liam Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. Couple tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce. Just a squirt of uh, light oil, that's grapeseed oil actually. And about a quarter cup of red wine. All right, we'll whisk all that together. No salt in this, by the way. No salt. We're gonna season those guys before we uh, sear them off, so that'll bring the salt in. This has no salt. All right, I got a uh, Ziploc bag here. Gonna go ahead and put my uh, back strap in the bag there. And we'll carefully pour this mixture right in there. Seal this up real good, try to push most of the air out of it, and we'll let it hang out in the fridge for a little while. Started this uh, pretty far ahead of time, so the longer you marinate it, the more that flavor's gonna get in it. All right, so we got our venison marinate. Now, Gordon, he doesn't marinate his, uh, his filet, but again, he's probably using some, you know, $20 pound Wagyu beef. Here we got uh, an old horny guy from out in the woods. 
living on whatever he could eat. So you, you guys know that venison is going to be a lot leaner than beef. So that marinade is going to help uh, tenderize it and bring a little bit more flavor. And that oil will bring a little bit of fat to it. And so hopefully it will turn out this is good or better than old Gordon's beef wellington. All right, so next step is we got some portobello mushroom caps. I'm gonna go ahead and slice these up. Now, if they got any extra dirt on them, just use a brush to get, get it off. These are pretty clean. Uh, you don't wanna wash them, okay? But our, our idea here is to get the moisture out of these. So I'm just gonna roughly chop them. And we're gonna put them right up in here in our food processor. Gonna probably take about two full caps. for this uh, one Wellington that we're going to do. Could also put some onions in here if you like. Uh, Ramsey doesn't use them, so we're not going to use them. Get this over here. them knocked down in there and we want to grind them up pretty well chop them up pretty well but not all the way to a paste it's the quickest and fastest way to do it should look something like that now we're going to saute those off and remove the rest of the moisture and of course we're going to do that on some cast iron cast iron skillet warmed up right here it's dry, completely dry now. Got it on a low flame. Just scrape all this out. And we don't want to brown them. So if I have to, I'll reach down there and turn that fire off. That's what I'm going to do right now. We kind of see where it's going to end up at as far as heat goes. This cast iron gets hot fast. It smells good though. Insert smell of vision right here. I'm just gonna keep those moving around. We'll turn the flame back up and let the moisture evaporate. Alrighty, time to get our back strap ready for searing. What I'm gonna do is give it a generous seasoning now. I took it out of that marinade, kind of let the excess marinade drip off of it. And I'm gonna season it on all sides. And we're gonna get ready to sear it off. Also want to keep that heat up, so I'm going to go ahead and slide that damper door all the way off. And that does help. So to do this next step, if you do it right, you're going to need some Parma ham. This is Prosciutto de Parma. Um, it's 
prosciutto, imported from Italy. If you don't have it, I guess just skip this step, but this is going to help us big time here. This is, uh, it's pretty thin, comes on these little wax paper deals. I'm going to do this very much like we would do our bacon weave. We got on a piece of cellophane. The wind is blowing like crazy and it's trying to blow my cellophane all over the place. These are separated by sheets. And we want it to be as wide as our backstrap piece is long. So let's uh, look at it right there. It's about two, two pieces is going to be fine for what we got. Now I remember those mushrooms we did earlier. I had them over here cooling down. They're down to room temperature. So we're going to go ahead and squish them out there in one layer. spin it up just like a little sausage that's what it should look like I'm gonna take that put it in a fridge and let it chill hey right, guys for the uh, wrapper for this guy we're gonna use Pepperidge Farm puff pastry sheets it's gonna work the best gonna puff up nice if you know how to make puff pastry yourself you can do that we're gonna use this And I'm gonna open them. This one's been unthawed, uh, un freezing for a little while. I had it out, and then I put it back in the fridge. You don't want it to crack when you open it up. All right. We brought our rolling pin out just to make sure we can make it homogeneous again. Kind of repair those those cracks, the seals, the folds, whatever you want to call them. And to make sure it's not going to stick, we flowered that surface. Let <clears throat> that really give a flower. Roll it a couple more times. So let's go get our uh, venison wellington out of the fridge and put this together.
got it all nice and rolled. I'm bringing over my seasoned cast iron. This is the uh, a lodge that uh, Mrs. Backwoods got me a while back. It's going to be a perfect baking pan, and because we're going to bake this on the Weber kettle grill, just like you've seen us do bread the other day. I'll lay that rascal right in the middle, kind of shape him a little bit. I'm going to get them nice and smooth. See the juice getting out. I'm going to go ahead and paint the whole thing with our egg wash. The sides, the ends. And this is going to give it a beautiful color. Now for final little touch. I'm going to take the back side of the knife and we're going to roll it over just like that. Every three quarters of an inch or so, kind of give it a pattern. And for a final touch, I'm going to sprinkle right over the top a little coarse sea salt. indirect for 400 I got uh, most of the chimney full of Kingsford original I'm going to dole them out evenly on both sides go ahead and get our uh, grill on Just like that push these down a little bit then get some air there we go we got about half open on the bottom grill our bottom uh, um, the choke down there the air flow and then we're gonna go ahead and the top get our lid on open the top up all the way in one line with that center part of the grill Time to go in. Now, how long is it going to take? I have no idea. Really don't. Until it's nice and golden brown. It'll be done. Guys, this is what it looks like after about 18 minutes. I notice it's not cooking as much on this side as the other, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate it around. And let it finish up. Getting close. I'm a little worried of how this turned out because that thing really blew up way bigger than I thought it would. And I'm hoping that the crust is still in contact with the meat. You guys remember how big the meat was. And over here in the same pan that we seared off that backstrap in, we made a vegetable medley that smells awesome. So, all right, folks, the first time I ever tried to make this. So we're gonna go in, take a look at it. I think this pastry is really puffed up way bigger than I thought it would. I'm gonna go right in the middle. Got a piece of like a bread knife here. So I'm not calling this a fail, the meat a little overdone. So what could we have done there to uh, differently so that wouldn't happen? A, 
We could have had that skillet uh, at the beginning and the sear a lot hotter. You know, but when you're cooking outdoors, you don't always have, it's not the stove, all right? You know, you, you got what you got. Um, the sear probably a little, you know, stayed on there a little too long. And we probably could have increased the cooking temperature by uh, 50 degrees when we baked it off. I think that's where uh, some of the problem happened. And then again, I left this sitting here uh, for about 15 minutes before we cut into it. That probably was a big mistake also. Uh, so, I mean, it's just barely done all the way through. It's very moist, very delicious. Uh, but like I said, we're looking for that uh, the medium, medium rare in the middle. Didn't get that. So guys, you know we couldn't leave you hanging without trying to do this a little better. So we have done exactly the same preparation. The only time, only thing we did different is we let it chill longer. We got our fire much hotter by putting some, you know, some live wood up underneath the Sportsman's Grill, getting that pan really smoking hot. We only seared it just, I mean, like 10 seconds on each side, did a beautiful sear on it. And we've got our Weber Kettle Grill going 450. I've also, since I've wrapped this with the pastry, I put it in the fridge for a, a lot longer. So this is completely cooled down now, and hopefully that's gonna keep our meat from overcooking. Now remember, a deer backstrap is way smaller than a you know fillet that you're gonna to use to do a beef wellington. So we're gonna to have to take those measures to keep from overcooking it. So here's gonna be try number two. We're gonna go ahead and stick it right back on the Weber kettle grill on this nice lodge cast iron platter. dish that's normally made you know in a restaurant and we try to do it out here in the outdoors using uh, just charcoal natural flame and you know it's not going to turn out perfect every time but if you keep trying you keep practicing you can make it turn out just like this beautiful venison wellington did here on our second try okay back with gourmet it's not always perfect so as you guys can hear it is still pouring outside and in typical Florida fashion, the sun is shining brightly. Um, I just want to remind you real quick about our Teespring site. It's going to be right down in the merch shelf right below this video. We got a brand new shirts out there. It's, uh, you know, smell my Dutch oven. Hopefully you guys can see that uh, brand new design here. So go check out Teespring and get your official smell my Dutch oven. Back with gourmet t-shirts. Hey, thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. If you like what we're doing, please hit that like button right down there. If you subscribe to our channel, it's going to be right up here. And don't forget to turn on your notifications using the little bell. For another great Backwoods Gourmet video, it's going to be right up there. And for a whole playlist of cooking wild game outdoors, it's going to be right up there. We'll see you next time.